working now. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Uh, this event is brought to you by Timing Research and Trade Out Loud. The event is being recorded, and the recordings will be available as soon as they're processed on the Timing Research com website and also uh, on the timingresearch.com YouTube channel. David Cosmeter and I will be your host today. And before we begin, we want to remind you that all of the education um, and webinars that are provided today are definitely for educational purpose only and should not be construed as investment advice regarding the purchase or sale of securities, options, futures, Forex or any instrument of any kind because trading involves a high level of risk may not be suitable for an investors because you could lose money. So before deciding to trade, you should carefully consider your objectives, your level of experience and risk appetite. Individual performance depends upon each person's skills, time commitment and effort. Results will not be typical and individual results will vary. So you must do your own research and make your own trading decisions. And with us today, we have Mandy, that is going to talk to us about sabotaging our trading decisions and it can cost us a pretty good buck. So Mandy, you have the mic. Thank you so much, Anka. And thank you again for having me and inviting me. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you guys. And also I want to thank um, Norman Hallett for moving uh, one hour later so that I can have the first spot. Really, really appreciate uh, my esteemed colleague here. Um, so, yes, let's get started. I hear that all the time, you know, I get emails from traders and they say I'm sabotaging my trading and, you know, I, I lost so much money because of my self-sabotaging behavior. What can I do, you know? And so um, it's really one of the most common ways that I work with my traders, um, helping them to turn their saboteurs into a supporter. And, um, simplified it's three action steps because we only have 50 minutes but you guys know that it's, there's actually so much more to it and I try to impart as much inside information as possible I'll keep also an eye on the um, on the questions so if you guys have questions I'd rather answer your questions than getting through my presentations because I think this is much more worth worth um, I forgot to add my um, disclaimer. In a nutshell, I'm not a psychologist, even though my website's called Trading Psychology. Um, I'm a highly trained coach. And um, so please remember that I don't take responsibilities for anything <laughs> in a nutshell. Excellent. So let's get started. So when we look at the mistakes traders make, there's just so many mistakes that we, um, we can make. And that's good news. So if I see traders who are more uh, trading discretionary, what they are prone to do or the emails that I receive from them is annoyed emails, frustrated emails, disappointed emails of I exited my winning trade too early. And when we talk discretionary, it doesn't mean that it don't have a strategy. It simply means in, in my definition, um, might be different than someone else's definition. It means that they don't have a predefined profit target. They might have a predefined um, stop loss, but not necessarily either. Um, or what they can do is the exiting losing trades too late. And, um, again, um, it could be because they have a stop loss that's predefined, or it could be that they see that the trade has turned around and um, it's not going in their direction anymore. And they know they have to exit, but they, they can't get themselves to press that mouse button. When we look at systematic trading, meaning um, that they have predefined profit targets and stop losses, we see a lot of micromanaging those systematic trades, meaning that um, they have a, a predefined profit target, but the trade is maybe stalling a little or it's um, starting to look like it's going to turn around. The trader gets nervous and, and then exits early because then there's this, all these fears kicking in, like um, you know, the fear of missing out, the fear of um, the giving um, back the profits. So if I say the fear of missing out, um, that could be that they think that they can employ the money that they have in this trade in another trade that um, is more profitable. Um, and so when we look at what can happen in both scenarios is really um, the hesitation to get into the trade, even though there is a great setup. 
and also the very feared and famous over trading and even going on tilt. So these are the only scenarios that we have. And then within those scenarios, there's many, many variations depending on the individual trader. Now, I want to teach you three steps to optimize your trading decisions. And guys, you know, we can talk about mindset and psychology for the next 10 years because it's so vast. There's so many insights now, you know, especially with um, the new method uh, um, technology with MRI scans and the extraordinary work that Professor Huberman is bringing out there in his brain research um, from, um, if you don't know him, go to Twitter Huberman Lab, so H-U-B-E-R-M-A-N-L-A-B. Um, and we, we can learn so much about how our, how our brain really um, works. So for example, when um, we are in a situation of stress and fear, the brain um, creates chemicals that literally interrupt the connection between the survival brain, the, the um, amygdala and the prefrontal cortex the thinking brain and that's why we get the experience of um, being the deer in the headlight for example or um, brain freeze or getting a foggy brain so there's actually a chemical reaction going on in your brain and the more we understand about what's going on in our brain when we make trading decisions or the lack thereof the more we can actually um, prepare ourselves to not get into those situations so have inoculate ourselves against the brain going in, in fight and flight or in stress mode and going into survival. So when we understand what's going on, then we are in control, then we are in power. And I love what Carl Jung said. I mean, how many years has Carl Jung been um, you know, on this earth and started his inquiries into the conscious and the unconscious mind? And it's still so valid nowadays. And he says, until you make unconscious, until you make the unconscious conscious, the unconscious will direct your life and we will call it fate or what we do it in uh, what we call it in the context of trading is we call it lack of discipline but really what the lack of discipline is is the unconscious running the show and that's why what we want to do is we want to look at our unconscious um, behavioral pattern and the unconscious behavioral pattern are nothing but the conditioning and the programming from our past it can be um, the the early past like you know teenage years it can also be in later years when something a significant event happened and we got influenced by the significant event and then we you know we we created beliefs um, based on this event either supporting beliefs or limiting beliefs and that can also impact our um trading nowadays. So what we really want to do is we want to rewrite the story and the meaning we gave the stories of our lives and then create a new future. But in order to rewrite the story, we need to know what the story is, what our unconscious is talking about when we have the self-talk in our mind. So when I talk about um, the, the story, it's really when... <laughs> When you start being really aware and present in the moment, you realize how much you talk to yourself in your mind and how much of that is either supporting what you're doing or is resisting what you want to do. Um, a very simple example, you say you want to get up at five o'clock in the morning tomorrow to go to the gym and then the mind chatter starts when the alarm clock goes. Oh, it's so nice and warm in bed. I don't want to get up. Maybe just one more minute maybe just five more minutes, right? all of this chatter. And I um, had a um, um, professional athlete as a boyfriend once and he had to get up at five in the morning to train. And there was no mind chatter. He would just, the alarm clock would go off and he would jump out of bed and like, how do you do that? You know, this is just amazing. And he said he just doesn't engage in any discussion with his mind because he sees himself as the one who gets up in the morning, goes to training, is on time and is always his best because he wants to participate in the world championships. Right? It's like that's what he expects of himself. And this is what, uh, is what I found really, really interesting because the story of his life, which is his self-image in a nutshell, was or is that 
he is one who gets up on time. Whereas many people, when they want to get up at five in the morning to go to the gym, their self-image or their story is that they are not someone who does that. And um, anyone who has been following me on Twitter, I have um, in the last year uh, begun to um, attend Wim Hof events. So the fundamental, the advanced, and, and some, um, I have a uh, Wim Hof practitioner who lives close by, so I can go to his house and have ice baths and um, do the breathing and practices with him. And this is really, I never saw myself as someone who would be in an ice bath, like never. And when I realized that I had this limiting belief around this, which, you know, served me really well because I didn't need to step up, I could stay, you know, in my comfort zone. I'm like, huh, okay, I'm maybe not someone who does that now, but I want to be someone who does it. And then I made a decision in the moment that I'm going to become someone who does ice baths. Um, it's becoming a regular thing of my life. And so I rewrote the story. I rewrote my self-image. It was the same with trading because I never saw myself as someone who is smart enough who can trade. And, you know, guys, I studied business, which is really funny because I never saw myself as someone who is good in business. And I saw these people. We had this little trading club in at university. And I saw the charts on the wall. It didn't make sense to me. I never saw myself as someone who would know um, or would be able to trade, right? That was just so far from me. And nowadays, look at what I'm doing, right? For the last um, almost 20 years now. So it's really when we have a limiting belief around who we can be or who we cannot be, we can rewrite the story consciously and change our self-image and thus create a new future. Because what I found with traders who sent me those angry emails and emails about um, thinking who they can be and who they can't be, um, it's really that they um, have the self-image of someone who is not disciplined or they have a self-image of someone who screws up. And I, I just posted a video before I was working with a trader who um, <laughs> she found it incredibly hard to to enter trades. She would hesitate so many times and leave so much money on the table. And because she is so cautious, what she also did, she prepared herself really well. So she she back tested her uh, strategy, he fo she forward um, tested her strategy, and she um, went on live market replay to practice using her strategy, she did everything right. And yet she could not press that mouse button. And so we started, we did that um, um, three steps that I'm introducing to you guys here. And it was really interesting. First we thought, oh, maybe she has, uh, she's afraid of losing money because she grew up in an environment where um, there was, you know, a little bit of scarcity. The parents weren't that rich. It wasn't that they were poor, but there was, you know, there was just not enough money um, to go around to live a comfortable life. So they had to be um, careful with their spending. But it, does, it just didn't resonate with her and it just didn't sit right. And so then we explored further and it turned out, she then realized, remem remembered a story where um, she she would have milk for breakfast when she was six or seven years old. And um, she would have to pour her own milk. But you know, little kids that don't have much coordination and she would always spill the milk. And then she, um, she would be screamed at and, and told off that she's wasting that valuable um, um, resource milk. And there was not much money in the house. And then she had to carry her glass from the kitchen bench to the table because she wasn't allowed to um, pour the milk on the table. And then on the way, she would also um, spill milk and um, because out of fear, right? And um, we know nowadays that when we are in fear, our muscles they have these micro, um, micro contractions that we can't control. And these micro contractions, they caused um, her to spill milk again. So in a nutshell, what she realized, what she was conditioned and programmed for was making a mistake means um, withdrawal of love, means um, being punished, means pain. And that was so deep in her unconscious, she wasn't aware of it until we explored this and it brought it to um, her conscious attention. 
And as it is now in her consciousness, she now, when those feelings come up, she you now we, we created this little saying where she then says, there's no need to, um, to cry over spilled milk. And so that is really resonating with her and helping her to overcome that fear and press that mouse button. I mean, how hard can it be to press a mouse button, one would think, but it is, right? So in order to rewrite the story of your trading life, I should say, and create a new future as you as a trader who does what they know to do, meaning that they get out when the exit is being triggered. If they're a systematic trader, they don't touch the trade until either the stop loss or the profit target is being triggered. Right? So we know what to do. That's really the foundation of it. So number one, we have to collect evidence of our major trading mistakes. And what I found is when I ask traders who, who contact me and, and tell me about their trading, I say, what is the mistake that you make in about 80% of the time? Because that's what I, what I see with my traders they make the same mistake over and over again. And this is really good news because now we only need to work on one mistake. We don't need to work on, on 10 different mistakes. If we can eliminate this one mistake that is being repeated over and over again, that means that we then can improve our statistics tremendously. So again, most traders then answer or oh, I, um, I think it is, um, I would say it is, oh, let me think. And I'm like, what is the facts and figures? I want to see statistics. And most of them, most of the traders don't have any evidence or statistics of what the major trading mistakes are. And then I ask them, go back and give me those statistics. And I will explain to you um, what it is in a, in, a, in a moment. Now, the second step then is, um, to explore what your unconscious thoughts are and bring them to the forefront of your conscious awareness. Once we know what our unconscious thoughts and the associated feelings are, and then we can, um, we can sort them into thoughts and feelings that help us to be amazing traders, um, profitable traders, and thoughts and feelings that stand in the way of being um, the trader that we want to be. And if we have those thoughts and feelings that stand in the way that these are the saboteurs, then of course we can reframe them, we can transform them, we can look at it from a different perspective, um, we can maybe learn something new, and then we can learn to transform those thoughts into supporters, thoughts that help us to succeed. And again, I will give you lots of examples afterwards. Now, this is the step three, then, when we have transformed our thinking, and that enables us to take control of our actions, but that also needs to be practiced, and, and that's what I do with my traders. I practice with them when they have to say that thought, let's say, um, um, the thought of, oh, I don't want to give my profits back, I don't want to take a loss now, I had such a good run, to then say, that is not the point you need to get out because your exit tells you to get out or you need to get out because clearly the trade um, is now going the other direction. You're going to lose your, um, your, your capital if you keep going. Now, so really look at your self-talk. And in my opinion, there's really two reasons why people don't achieve their goals in life. Um, and I'm, I'm really generalizing here, um, maybe health goals, relationship goals, trading goals. The two reasons are that they don't know that they don't know um, the missing pieces of their trading. So very often I see that the trader needs to explore um, different exit strategies, that the exit strategy is not working for them because they have to give back too much. And that is really impacting their emotional capital. Um, so we, we maybe need to tighten up the stop loss um, or they need to get additional information on um, 
when their strategy doesn't work and what they can do in order to identify in advance that the strategy is going to fail. So for example, I love trading double tops and double bottoms. And as we know in the past few years, the double tops haven't really worked well. And as Linda Rushke always says, um, when there is a setup, let's say a short setup and that fails, that is a long setup in itself. So that becomes a continuation pattern rather than a reversal pattern. Now that was a really big piece of information that somehow escaped me now looking back is just of course you know it makes sense common sense but only until I heard Linda saying that it was not in my awareness and and so it wasn't it was a gap in my skill set that impacted my performance yeah. so um, it's not only that we have the emotional and mental um, um, challenges to overcome it is also we need to look at what is our skill set um, that we need to improve or can improve what i found with a lot of traders really is that they focus too much on how they are not good enough how they are losers how they screw up again and they completely disregard how they are actually doing really well in other areas and when we know this when we look at the story of um, steffi graf the tennis player who's married to um, Andre Agassi. And I know the younger guys don't remember Steffi Graf, which is very disappointing. Um, she was my idol um, when I grew up. So Steffi, you know, one of the best tennis players in the world, she had a killer forehand, but her backhand was really weak. And um, so the coach had to make a decision. Is he going to work with her on her backhand, improve her backhand, which maybe um, comes at the expense of her forehand? Or is he going to focus on her forehand? And that's what they did because there were other influencing factors. There is nothing is just one dimensional. Learning to trade and having um, an edge in trading is really a multi-dimensional um, um, adventure. You know, we can't just look at bars, charts, and moving averages. There is so much more that is um, influencing what is a good edge in trading, what gives us the edge in trading. So um, because Steffi Graf was also in little athletics and she has these really long legs and she could cover a lot of the court in a very short period of time, they decided to focus on her forehand because she can outrun any backhand easily. And, you know, they made the right decision because, you know, she was the best um, tennis player in the world. And we need to do the same in trading where we look at, so is our strategy um, helpful and useful for our way of trading or is it not? And um, I'm really great at reversal pattern trading. I'm not so good at um, continuation pattern trading. So let's say reversal pattern trading is the backhand and continuation pattern trading is the forehand. Um, so I was really good at one, but in trading, I couldn't figure out how to make up for it with um, long legs. Well, I don't have long legs, I'm really short actually, um, and outrunning a backhand. So I needed to train myself to also trade um, continuation patterns and to really get my head around it. So it was um, not necessarily a mindset issue when, when I had a lapse in my trading performance, but it was a skill issue because the market didn't give me, um, the, the market is just not the right market to short too much. Maybe not to, tonight is a different story, but let's see. <laughs> All right, so now I want to give you an example, right? So I was trading, I was live trading with a client and we entered here, that's the one minute chart on the DAX. And um, I keep the DAX pretty simple because what is the beauty with the DAX is, is that it has these beautiful trending moves. It rarely chops. And so what we did is we entered short here and um, I only trade one, one instrument, one or two, the DAX or the DAO, because I, know myself so well. I can't think in multi dimensions. I'm not a visionary like Linda Rushke, for example. She can trade 10 different markets at the same time. I'm more of a detailed person and I, I tried to trade like Linda, but I, I just couldn't make it work. But I could start to think in the same structures like Linda does and the same dynamics like Linda does. So I learned so much from her, um, studying her videos and reading her book. So um, what 
because I mostly trade the decks, I know the decks so well, like, you know, like you guys know your kids. And so you can see the decks came down here. We said, let's exit um, at 12, 125, because I know when the decks goes close to a round number, then there might be a chance for it to bounce. And, and so uh, we got out uh, around here and you can see there was another nice, um, quick short to the downside in and my trader <laughs> he didn't tell me he went short a second time and so I was talking with him doing some coaching explaining and um, and he didn't tell me that he went short and then you know I could feel that he's getting stressed I'm like what's going on and he said oh you know I went back short and look all my profits I'm giving them back so eventually he and I didn't tell him to get out because that's not my job right I, I asked him you know what's going on for you and so eventually he got out at 12 um, 15 to 100 at the next round number so he gave back you know 80 points and ended up with what 50 not even because of the slippage but this is exactly what happens so much to traders they have a great trade and then they want more and the trade turns around and goes against them. And um, I chose this example because this was me. This would, I call that my superwoman syndrome where I would have a, you know, go short here, get out, re-enter, get out, re-enter and have like three or four or five really amazing trades. And then I'm like, mm, I think it's losing steam. And even though I think all the right things, my finger still goes and presses the mouse button and would go long here <laughs> and then give all the profits back. And I said to him, look, this is exactly what I used to do. So don't feel bad. At least you got out um, at that time. But we made it a really great um, example of, okay, so what was going on here? What was your thoughts? Because the problem, guys, was not that he went back in short. The problem was that he didn't get out when we said to get out. Our strategy was we get out when price preaches that um, middle Bollinger. And, you know, that's a double bottom. That was clearly an exit. So he didn't do what he knew he should do or must do, what his strategy said, what he promised me to do. So he was what we call not being disciplined. And then, and then we did exactly that, um, that approach, right? So good trading decisions don't happen by accident, I always say. They are a result of good thinking strategies. And this is why I love Einstein so much, because he says education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. And, and this is really what I do with my, my traders. I help you guys to think and um, to think in a way that helps you to succeed in trading. Because as we know, this is very counterintuitive to how it helps us to survive and do really well in other areas of life. <laughs> so... Um, and, and um, that's what also makes trading so exciting that we have to learn a completely new skill. And so it's really your most powerful trading tool is your brain. And if you learn how to retrain your mind, then you will not only succeed in trading, you will be able to succeed in all areas of life. And so to get started with, right? Um, so, when we have like this guy here, right? So he, he made a mistake. We can use, um, this is Tom Dante, he's on Twitter. Um, Anka knows Tom Dante and, and I just love this guy. He's, he's, just, um, he's just a really, really good teacher as well um, in FX, but um, I don't think he does much anymore in terms of teaching. So, but this is his, what he calls the demon finder where you write down the typical mistakes that we can make. Enter too soon, exit too soon, enter too late, exit too late. Um, didn't follow the plan at all. Just, you know, jumped into a trade willy nilly. Um, um, too much risk. So meaning um, put on too many trades at once um, for the amount of capital you have in. So you can see you just make a list of the most common mistakes you make. And then when you have a losing trade that you didn't follow your rules, you make a tick and you write a little bit of context. Didn't follow rules. Um, so 
um, here was, um, well, we should here re-entered and um, so that would be, a, didn't, uh, what is it? Not in trading plan would be this one, right? So re-entered and didn't exit. And then we can see after a very short period of time, which one of those rows has the most ticks. And then you know what is the main mistake that you make. And, and so um, one of my traders added the angel finder, which I thought, yeah, that's actually a really good idea. So here I am preaching, we also need to look at our strengths and didn't think of an angel finder. And so we can also do the same with a list of what we did really, really well. And so we can find out what our strengths are. So we can do more of the strengths. When we do more of what we are really good at, we will automatically do less of what we are not so good at. So we automatically make less mistakes. And this is then how we can improve our profits and reduce our losses and hence increase our profit factor. I'm a big fan of profit factor. Profit factor is very useful, whereas profit and loss ratio really doesn't mean anything. Most of my six, five, six figure traders a month, um, so traders who generate um, 10,000 above is the five figures and 100,000 plus is my six figure traders. Um, they have profit loss ratios of 48 to 52 or 55 to 45. So really, really low in terms of profit loss ratio because to probe the market a lot. They get in, get out, get in, get out, get in, get out to until they get a runner. Um, but everybody's different, right? There is not really um, the perfect trader in itself. What they all have in common though, they all cut their losses really quick. And Linda says that as well, right? Linda is like, I, I can't stand having a loss on my books. I can't stand it. I need to get rid of it like, like bad, bad breath, you know? So um, again, something when I don't want to get out of my trade, I, I literally hear Linda's words. It's like, I can't stand being in a bad trade. I get out immediately. I hate it. I rather get in and re-enter a trade and, um, before I give my profits um, turn my profits into losses. So Linda would rather get out of the $1 profit and then re-enter the trade if it continues in, in the direction, then ending up having her profits turned into a loss. And what we um, con need to consider is what happens in trading that then impacts our emotional and mental capital. Um, I think the words emotional and mental capital are actually coined by Denise Schall. So I want to credit um, my colleague Denise in uh, for these words as well. So I'm I'm a big fan of crediting anyone because or everyone because you know um, it's just the right thing to do. <laughs> cool. So once you have your information, right? What is the biggest um, mistake that you make? Then let's say you always um, exit too late, so you you don't get out when you know you when your strategy says you sh you must get out. So now you need to become of your unconscious thoughts and bring them into conscious awareness. So for example, and this one I want to credit to Steve Ward um, in his book, High Performance Trading. It, I think this one is from uh, the webinar Trader Mind, which I helped him to market in Australia, which was in 2012, such a long time ago, oh my God, um, when, when he was my coach and um, helped me through some tough times. Um, as well. So see, we, we, we all need help. No one can do it on their own. So um, this is what call, uh, Steve calls the, I oh know this is the ABC. Okay. So you, you look at what happened, right? Um, I didn't take my loss at the predefined exit. So this is um, um, this one here. Didn't take my loss here. So he re-entered, didn't get out and then uh, lost 40% of the profits after having had that great run. Then what did he tell himself um, that stopped him, that justified him not getting out? And it was, oh, I just made such a good profit. It was working so hard. I don't want to give it all back. 
I'm such an idiot. Why did I have to be greedy? What's wrong with me? And so he's wasting all this time on talking to himself and and um, googling how to be um, how to be disciplined and and uh, like doing everything he could to avoid doing the one thing that would have made all the difference. Whenever you guys hear yourself arguing with yourself, if you should get out and maybe it's going to turn around, then you're lost. It's already a lost cause. It's the same thing like wanting to get up at five in the morning and arguing with yourself or oh, just five more minutes. Oh, I, I didn't sleep well. I, I need a few more hours. Otherwise, I'm going to be tired um, at work and I can't perform. So maybe I go to the gym tomorrow morning. It's just all bullshit talk. Yeah, so all this stuff, all the podcasts you listen to, um, most of them are really designed for you not to do the one thing that you need to do. And that is pressing that mouse button and getting out. That is getting out of bed at five in the morning, going to the gym. Nothing else matters. Yeah. So then looking at um, how did you feel? What, what feelings did you have? And define them. Um, say I notice I feel this feeling I notice I feel that feeling where in your body do you feel it and then what you can do why that is so important is you can start using it as an emotional guidance system when you start feeling the frustration creeping up you know you are now at risk of making a mistake and when you start arguing with yourself together with those feelings you know you're doomed that you're not going to take your loss that is the moment like when my double tops failed and and price took out the high and that was a long entry in itself a continuation pattern imagine that when you have this self-talk arguing with yourself and talking yourself out of being disciplined and doing what you know you must is the same that is for you the sign that it doesn't matter just press that button and get on with it and what we do is we then starting to slump in the chair, we hang our bread head and everything that's just so disempowering, you know, sit up straight, take charge of your life. And no, I can tell you guys, really, everybody's asked me this question. What's the difference between your super successful traders and the ones who are stuck in the losing loop? It is they do indeed take their losses really fast. They can't stand it having losses hanging around. They might have one big outlier, but in general, they take the losses really fast. That, that's, the, that, that's really the main difference. And they go through the same frustrations, the same pain like everyone else. So you can also use the what Steve called the ABCD. And Steve just brought out a new um, Trader Mind journal. Um, um, I, I can um, send the link to Anker, Anker maybe later, um, or you can just Google it. It's got its own website now. I forgot what it's called. But Steve is really well organized and, and um, his journals are just amazing, like his book, High Performance Trading. So now you can look again, what was the activating event? What did you tell yourself? So that's usually connected with a belief. So remember how I said to you at the beginning, I always saw myself as someone who can never be good at trading because I'm not good at mathematics. It was, was completely outside of my self-image that I could ever do something like that. Um, that I always had the belief that I can't be in an ice bath or get up at five in the morning um, to, you know, go to the gym because I always saw myself as someone who is um, not disciplined. I never saw myself as someone who can actually sit in front of a piece of chocolate and not eat it. But that was just a limiting belief. That was just my self-image. And then I realized I have to change my, um, my self-image, and let go of the stories of the past. Yes, in the past, I was this person. But if I choose to be different, I can. And so that was really reinforced again when I was sitting in that ice bath. So we had these five rounds of two minutes. And um, two minutes is a very long time, I can tell you that. And by, you know, by the third time I had learned through the breathing exercises and through the mental imagery that um, 
Mika taught. It's really funny. My Wim Hof instructor, his name is William Frost. And no, he didn't make up the name, he says. It's actually his real name. So um, it's quite cute. So, but he had taught us how to be in the ice bath and use the power of our mind and mental imagery to actually feel warm in, in that ice bath was amazing. And that reminded me very much of when I did the fire walk with Tony Robbins, because in the fire walk, we had to, um, we, we got prepared also with um, breathing exercises. I'm sure some of you guys have done the fire walk as well. So we have um, prepared with breathing exercises and really building up the power inside and, and feeling at the course of life and feeling strong. And, and then we had to walk across the hot coals and saying, cool, moss cool moss, cool moss. And the same, at the time, I did it in 2002, I didn't understand the power of my mind. I just did what Tony Robbins said. And he had so much, um, I had so much trust in him and faith in him that I believed that it's going to work. That was it. And it did work. I did not burn my feet. So it was an amazing experience. So these are the beliefs. Um, these are the outcomes. And now talk to yourself how can you change that? Um, Byron Katie's work is really useful as well for um, disputing your self-talk. Is that really true? That's that's the question she always asks herself when she has a thought. Um, is that really true? And then she looks at the difference, the, the opposite. So for example, I was working with a trader who was very superstitious and he said, I need the first trade of the day to be a profitable trade. Otherwise the whole day is going to be doomed. And I said, is that really true? Let's have a look. Did you ever have a day where you started with a losing trade and you ended up in profitable? And we went through his statistics. And indeed, there was plenty of them. But because of his belief system, he blended them out. We completely forgot about them. So you can see how important it is to look at our, our facts and figures and our statistics. Um, and now what can we create as a, as a um, positive, as an empowering belief that when the day starts with a losing trade, we don't make this drama out of it. It's not a big deal. It's just losing trade, right? And so I always, again, look at Linda. And Linda, she, so we had this racehorse wings here, W. I N X, you can see her on YouTube. And and she was unbeaten. Um, I think she had 25 starts on a 2000 meter race. So, so she's a stayer. And the way she started, she would always clown around in the back of the field. And then, uh, and then she would at some point um, catch up and win with like five or six lengths every time. And Linda is the same. So when Linda had, um, and she describes it in her book, Trading Sardines, when Linda had, let's say, bad luck or she made a stupid mistake and she would be down, she would start, she says, I would put on my blinkers, would pull myself up by the by my um, bootstraps, I think it's called, um, and say, I have an amazing team around me. I know how to trade. I have the skill. So head down, focus, and now um, create those profits. And so Linda does the best work when her back is against the wall. And I'm like, how is that? And then I realized what Linda does is she puts her back against the wall of power where she gets energized and focused and, and brings her best work. And so we can change that as well. We can say, when I um, start my day um, down, which wall can I put my back against? What is my wall of power? What can I do to refocus? Yeah, so there's so many, many ways. This is the cognitive journal. And now you want to really transform your thinking and take control of your actions. And if you don't, then you're going to stay stuck like this little poor doggy. <laughs> I love that because um, this is what I call mental stuckness. And you want to move from mental stuckness, which is these limiting beliefs, this disempowering self-talk, this, I don't want to get out of this trade because I don't want to give my money back. I'm such a loser. And you want to go into mental fitness. And mental fitness really means that um, how quickly you can recover after you have made a mistake. 
And this is also the benchmark for great athletes. The difference between athletes, and, and I work with quite a few professional athletes as well, which is really, really, really interesting. Um, footy players here in Australia, um, soccer players in Germany, um, basketball players um, in, in, um, in the States, um, professional skier, just, just a different breed. It's so interesting. And it's really how quickly they can come back from a setback either from a setback where they made a mistake, so where the mental and emotional capital has been drained. And, and um, if it is a physical injury, how quickly they can recover from the physical injury. And so it's the same for us traders. You know, If we look at mental fitness and emotional fitness, what does it mean? After we have made a mistake, how quickly can we refocus and look at new opportunities? And what I found the difference between traders who do well and traders who stay stuck in the losing loop is that the ones who stay stuck, they don't recover quickly. They are so stuck in anger and frustration and pain and how they could be so stupid that they actually make it worse. Because again, having a losing trade is not a problem. Making a bad trading decision is not the problem. When you make a bad trading decision, the problem is if you don't get out of the trade. And so, so many traders, they try to avoid making a mistake. And you can't. You just can't because we are all human. We are all flawed. So rather than trying to avoid making a mistake, learn and practice to get out of when you have made a mistake really quickly cut your mistakes really quickly. And the way I do that with my traders is I always put them on live market replay. Trade Station is live market replay. Ninja is live, live market replay. Sierra Charts has amazing live market replay. Um, Trading View has live market replay. There are softwares out now where you can do it. And practice and train the skill of taking a loss. So what I did with my trader who... Um, made this mistake here we went on live market replay and i trained with him like 10 times in a row to get in short because he made the mistake i don't want him to be afraid of making mistakes i want him to be okay with making mistakes because he knows he can recover quickly so i trained with him getting in short and then get exiting here that was supposed to be his exit and he would only have given back 10 points and not 100 or what was it, 80. It was a lot of money. So um, go and practice like every athlete goes and practice. Practice your skills in, in terms of um, your trading methodology, your trading strategy. Um, just because you write down your trading plan doesn't mean that you can execute it. Just because you read about how to um, play a forehand in tennis doesn't mean that your body and your muscles and your propriety receptors know what to do. Yeah, it's, 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 you need to train it. It's the same with trading. It's the same with taking losses. You need to practice taking losses. And the best way, in my opinion, is on live market replay. I'm not a big fan of sim trading. I think it's a waste of time and um, is an avoidance strategy. Um, so, but that's just my personal opinion. All right, so I just want to check in. I have five minutes left and I want to know, do you guys have any questions? Um, anything else I can um, explain to you? Um, anything else I can help you with? Yeah, don't trade scared. Like, it's okay to make mistakes. And, you know, like I shared the story with, um, my uh, with my trader who spilled the milk. She was so conditioned that making a mistake is bad that she was scared and she didn't know why. And this is why these this exercise is really useful where you figure out what is really going on. You bring the unconscious to the conscious awareness. And often this is all it takes understanding what happened and then you're free and then you can just laugh at yourself and say no no point um, crying over spilled milk 
thanks, Tammy, for that. Who else? Anyone having a question? Anything I can serve you with, help you with? No questions? Do you want me to tell you more stories? So um, let me think. Um, was working with a trader who, um, Sperking, whom was I working with yesterday? Um, that's right. So working with the trader who, that was really interesting. Um, she she hesitated as well. Actually, was a he. Um, hesitated as well. And um, no, there was someone else. So th there was actually a she. And so what happened with her was she um, wanted to be a doctor. And her parents said that she's not smart enough to be a doctor. And they asked her to study um, engineering. But in her heart, she always wanted to be a doctor. Now she's doing something that she hates doing. So she has the self-image because this is what she has been brought up with, um, always being told that she is um, not smart enough um, and that she is not... Um, um, that, that, that she, you know, she just should just get married and don't think of a career, uh, which she did. Um, and now she has trading and she loves trading. So she always tries to prove to the world that she is smart. And by trying to prove to the world that she is smart and she's trying too hard and she gets into trades that are actually not good trades that are not in her plan. And so you can see the behavioral pattern is the same, but the reason behind we um, take traits that are not part of our plan is um, very different for everyone. And once she, she, you know, came to terms with, you don't need to prove to the world that you are smart. You are smart. Um, and changing her self-image, she didn't need to do that anymore. Any recommendations to evaluate gaps and competencies for trading? Yep. Um, Again, do that three-step process that I told you, that, that I shared with you. So these are the competencies in your thinking and feeling. Um, and then also look at the competencies in your skill set. So look at, um, look at your last 100 trades, for example. Out of the last 100 trades, how many of those trades did you um, have losing trades and how many did you have winning trades out of the losing trades how many did you follow your strategy and um, how many did you not follow your strategy out of the ones that you did not follow your strategy um, why not what happened so was it that you let your losses run um, into the abyss or was it that you were scared and you took left you exited earlier than your stop loss. And then the trade actually turned around and turned back into a profit. Um, out of the profitable trades, do exactly the same thing. How many did you follow your strategy and how many did you not follow your strategy? And now have a look. I was working with this trader, it was really interesting. He came to me because he was upset that he didn't follow his strategies. And then we found out when we went through his stats, which he never did, um, that actually his discretionary trading was the one that brought the money and he would make about four or five thousand dollars a month right um, he was working full-time and trading on the side that's like really really cool good right <laughs> so um, look at your statistics and you get so many insights um, just trying to catch up with that question did you find in your practice a specific mental condition which generates success in volatile markets you know Andrew awesome question thank you so much in my opinion the best way to learn trading in volatile markets is go on live market replay and practice it no mental condition no trading psychology in the world can replace that and I found that so often traders come to me and they're upset with themselves because they're not doing well in volatile markets. But it's like a beginner surfer who's upset that they fall off their surfing board when the waves are high. It's like you need to practice that. So start with being practical and practicing your skill set. And if you still don't do well, well in volatile markets, then I would look at your um, maybe DISC profile, DISC profile. So your natural behavioral patterns. Are you someone who can make really quick, fast decisions? 
And you will know that in other areas of your life. So, for example, when you go into a restaurant, are you able to make decisions fast? Or do you um, take your time and you find it hard to make a decision what um, dish to choose? So if you're someone who takes a little more time to make decisions, then you might be not um, suitable for volatile markets. Maybe your strategy is not suitable for volatile markets. Yeah, so there's, again, so many different moving parts um, that we that we uh, need to look at. When you have problems with trading volatile markets, we can also look at um, what is the specific problem? Is it driven by anxiety? If so, what is it that you're afraid of? Anxiety and stress always comes down to two things. Are you afraid of doing something uh, sorry, are you afraid of getting something that you don't want, so losses? Or are you afraid of not getting something that you do want, so your profits? Um, I think my time is up. Is that right, David? Um, now uh, yes, so, yes. So many great questions. I should have <laughs> moved to questions um, earlier. So I hope that was helpful, guys. And um, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. And thanks Anka and David. Usually I'm the last one today. I'm the one kicking it off and um, I'm handing now over to you guys.